I'm not the bad guy for making fun of promise ring. I have a best friend who has been dating a girl for five years now, and recently he's been talking about commitment. I was assuming he meant marriage because C and M have lived today for three years. Both have excellent paying jobs and M has brought up how she wants to get married. So when T started telling me about how he wants to get a ring for M, I was assuming it was an engagement ring and was very supportive. A few weeks later, he sent me a picture of the ring with the caption, It's time. Flash forward to the next night after that text, I'm at T and M's place to pick up something. Important to note before going, I was drinking at the bar down the street and decided to walk up to their place because they're about a five minute walk from there. I get there and we settle in when I notice the ring on Am's hand and stand congratulating them. T corrects me in saying that it's actually a promise ring. I start laughing thinking it's a joke because T has been known for very inappropriate jokes. M looked down and T starts grilling me on why I wouldn't even think that. I say something to the effect of what even is the purpose of a promise ring if you're already living like a married couple. And that is where M goes off on T, talking about how long she was waiting for him to get serious and that the ring seems so meaningless now. She ended up throwing the ring at him and leaving for her parent house. T just watched her leave and told me to stay and sober up. But we ended the night in lots of loud about the situation and a conversation on why it wasn't an engagement ring. Long story short, he wants to marry her, he doesn't even know why he called it a promise ring. Because he agreed that it's time for marriage. I leave then that today I now have a bunch of texts from various different people saying I'm in a bad guy for laughing about the promise ring and how now M doesn't want to be with T. T is mad as well saying I need to apologize to M for making her feel like having a promise ring was embarrassing and that M would understand because I was drunk and an idiot. But the thing is, I don't know if I should apologize because I do stand by my feelings about promise ring. So what do you think about it? I'm not the bad guy for choosing pickup basketball over my cousin's wedding. My older cousin is getting married today. And so we had never much of the relationship. So not to say we have a bad relationship or dislike each other. We're just not close at all and don't have any common interests. She lives four hours away by car from us and her wedding is today. My parents told me a couple weeks ago that their plans was to drive over on Friday night, stay at the hotel for the night, attend the wedding Saturday and then drive back Sunday. I told them I wasn't going with them. No disrespect to my cousin, but I honestly saw going to her wedding as a waste of a weekend. I know she wouldn't give a interest of it. I didn't go either, since the invitation sent to us was addressed to my parents and didn't mention my name at all. I asked other cousins if they had the names on the invite sent to the family and they did. I assume it was a subtle issue. After school, I went to play pickup basketball with my friends for a couple hours. My parents called me, freaking out and saying where I was and saying that I was late to be home so we could drive to the city where my cousin's wedding is. I told them that I said I wasn't going and was busy playing basketball. They insisted I had to go. I told them I had to go because I was missing my game. They ask if I really pick up basketball was more important than my cousin's wedding. I said yes, it was, hang up and went back to my game. My parents called me again today, extremely aggravated that I refused to go and saying I was a huge bag for it. I don't think it's serious. I didn't want to go. She clearly didn't care if I was there, so not a biggie. Am I the bad guy? 
I'm not a bad guy for being rude to a depressed student in my school. I just skipped a year in school, and I pretty easily integrated myself into a new friend group. I got along really well with everyone, but there was the one girl who hates me for some reason. For the sake of the story, I'll call her Mary. I was dating someone in this group, but she broke up with me last Christmas. However, we still ended on good terms. Since then, most of my friends were acting a bit different towards me, which I understand for most of them because they were my ex's friend before they were mine. But now, everything is fine in the group, however, Mary still hates me. I have never talked to Mary. I have one class with her, and whenever I ask her a question, she ignores me. We are also working on autism acceptance in school. And I'm working on a PowerPoint to present to different classes. The older students that are running this gave me their job of researching sensory issues, as I didn't know about it. And they wanted me to learn. So I went to a meeting to work on this PowerPoint and Mary was there. I was about to start on the job. I was given and she was doing it. So I asked her if there was anything I could do and she had taken every slide. And she told me that because I don't have autism and I don't experience the things, I wouldn't know what I was saying. The next day I was in the class I have with her and I was talking to my friend about if she knew what someone's locker was because they were lending me a book. Mary overheard me and started yelling at me, telling me that the person who was lending me the book was sick of me asking for work. The person lending me this book is one of my best friends. I tried to explain to Mary that I was borrowing the book because my friend was the one that suggested I take it. Mary still got mad at me and tried to convince me that my friend didn't want to be my friend and was bad talking me behind my back. I talked to some other people that know her about the situation and they told me that Mary is like that and there is nothing you can do because no matter what she going to use her depression as an excuse. I don't understand why she hates me so much. People told me it's because I'm similar to a pervert that used to be in our school. Simply because I'm extroverted. But I don't know what I did to this girl. I'm attempting to ask her what is the problem. But again, I don't want to be rude. I don't know what to do. Because the fact that she might even compare me to the pervert makes me really uncomfortable. I'm not the bad guy for not wanting my wife to use my toothbrush. I just found out my wife has been using my toothbrush. Important note, me and my wife constantly poke fun at each other, make jokes and generally laugh at each other, quirks and personal oddities. So the whole conversation below took place in our usual joking, teasing mode. Now the story. We swap out our old toothbrushes recently and then went on a trip with our new toothbrushes. We came back a little over two weeks ago, for some reason. Yesterday was the first day I noticed that her side of the toothbrush caddy was empty. Her breath has been as pleasant as it usually is over that time. So yesterday I asked her in a joking voice, Have you brushed your teeth since we go back? She looked at me like I was an idiot, that I am, and said, Yeah, of course, why? So Witcher replied that her side of the caddy was empty. She gets this devious smirk in her face that she always gets when she messes with me and goes, So, I've been brushing my teeth for the last two weeks and my toothbrush isn't in there. What conclusion does that leave us with? It looks me about five seconds before I realized what she was getting at. And we both burst up laughing. After we calmed down, I thought about it, and it didn't really upset me, but it did gross me out like a bit, like 2 or 3 out of 10. She can wrap her head around why I'm even a little grossed out. I mean, it's my wife, so I've obviously been inside her, but this seems different. 
Toothbrushes are different ground. So, they're used to clean off gross morning breath, and they're on the end of the day to clean out all the stuff you're at the day. So, it just feels a little nasty to share a toothbrush. To make matters worse, it's not like she lost hers and didn't have time to go buy a new one. It was literally in her toiletry bag in our living room that she was, to quote her, so lazy to go get it and didn't think to ask me to take the five seconds to go get it for her which i will be have been happy to do so am i the bad guy here for wanting separate toothbrushes am i the bad guy for yelling at my husband for eating my donut i'm married to my husband and he eats significantly more than i do like he eats a lot I drink a V8 every morning and starting having to buy more packages because he will drink multiply in one day and they will be out in like a couple days. If I buy any snacks, I'll get maybe a few before he will eat them. Example, two packages of pop tarts out of four, one sleeve of Ritz crackers out of like five or six and so on, drinks included. I use grape juice to make these caffeinated drinks I enjoy, and he knows it, but he always drinks it all in like two days. And it all comes to head today because I bought a dozen crispy cream donuts, six of his favorites and six of mine. He were gone by this morning. I had two last night, two this morning, and was gonna eat the last two tonight for dinner when I opened the box and there is only one left. So, to be frank, I got mad. I asked him why he would eat my donut when we clearly had six each and he told me that I'm being dramatic. He literally blew me off and started just playing on his phone when I was trying to talk to him about something that was bothering me and he reacts this way every time. I really tried to have this specific conversation. Outside of this, we have very healthy communication. So am I the bad guy for feeling like I'm telling him it was kind of selfish to eat my donut? Am I the bad guy for not helping my father? A little background here. We are an Indian family. My dad has always favored my brother from covering up him flinking 10, 11, 12 grade to college twice, but yet sending him to a different city, big college, and paying his way to a degree. He got into bad influence and my father still supported him with money while I had to go to a local college and pay for myself. I was a good kid and got good grades and tried my best to make him proud. I worked hard washing cars and walking dogs for it and made my own pocket money for school supplies and college admissions. My brother copied other ADM music and claimed it as his own, and my dad will play it at the parties and proudly boast about it to people, and I'm a good artist and people pay for my work, and dad calls it waste of space when I make art at home. My dad bought him three cars and offer the others, gets him gaming stations, expensive clothes and laptops. He buys me things too, but complains on how much I shop even though I really don't. And when it's a lot, I pay for myself. I had a really bad accident and my dad paid for my surgeries, but made me pay him back if I wanted to live in the same house. I got married at 2017, but it's going a little rocky, so I shifted back with my parents for a year. And I pay for my own marriage. And parents pay for my brother's lavish 1,000 people destination wedding. Fast forward to know my brother got serious, finished his degree and got a job and is doing well. He bought his own car and pays around the house. 
He covers the payment of house, help, and insurance, and he paid for all utilities like electricity, water, and groceries, while my parents enjoy their life. All family members in housework and earn good, including my mother. So my uncle fell sick last year and needed help with his treatments. My dad liquidated all his phones and mortgaged the house, but it wasn't enough. He asked my brother for help, but he refused because my brother hates our extended family. My dad then came to ask me for help, and I helped with a large sum by taking a loan, which he promised to pay back or help with the IMAs, but later one refuses to pay back even after a year of everything settled down. And I had sell everything to pay back, and still am. Yesterday he came to ask me for help with paying off his loans, as my dearest brother refused again. And I point blank said no. He called me selfish drama queen and kept telling me off all the whole night. Some really harsh things were said too, which made me crying for 24 hours straight about me being incompetent and freeloader on his house. And it spiraled into him making fun of my weight and my miscarriages. And the fact that I'm not even competent enough to bear a child. He kept saying that he did so much for me. And I, in return, never helped help him or did anything for them. But I paid around the house. I have never asked them for any money. So am I the bad guy for not helping? Am I the bad guy for changing the locks to my house? Hey guys! Single mom of two here. Long story but I need options. My mother lives two houses away from me and has watched my kids while I'm working since my oldest was born 13 years ago. Every few weeks she sleeps out at me over the smallest thing like calling me to the lowest and etc. I have my kids Monday to Friday. I also work until 5 Monday to Friday. On my weekends alone, I turn my music on, lock my door, cleaning the house, do DIY projects, that kind of thing. Just enjoying me, my time. She will randomly come over, knock once, and if I don't open the door right away, she will unlock it and come in, even after being asked her not to. She has always had a key for the kids after school. Yesterday was the nail in the coffin, so to speak. I've been stressed out from things at work, looking forward to my weekend alone to decompress and plan my once-in-a-lifetime. Like two-day trips away by myself in three months' time, she calls me, complains about the person and that person and demands I take her to town so she can browse the stores. She doesn't have a car. But doesn't matter, it's not a story. I told her I wasn't feeling too good and wasn't planning on going. She starts the guilt trip. I told her again that I wasn't feeling good, not planning on going, but I will take her if she wanted to. More guilt, but no, she is fine. Once bother me. And yes, 20 minutes later, she pounding on my door and trying to open it looking for her mail told her there was none day before. She told me to stop pushing us, means family, away and that they do everything for me, slams the door and leaves. I call her to find out what she meant, what's going on, she says I'm selfish, ungrateful, everything about me and a useless, terrible mom and dad, my trip is mentioned, wishing for it to happen since 2017, like that. More but I don't get into it. My kids and I have been talking about not getting her to come over after school anymore and they are old enough to look after themselves for the hour or two after school until I get home now. They're all for it because she's been making comments to them about me. They want to say what? I'm going today to get a new lock for the door. My daughter and I haven't the only case. I don't want to be a bad guy and cancel her phone, but I want her magical reasons. 
So am I the bad guy for wanting to change the lock and get some privacy for myself?